does the shopping pretty well most of the time. It depends what you want. If it, basic things, you know, the very basic things like your tea, your rice, your flour, your sugar, that can be got from the little shop that's just diagonally over the road from us. Otherwise, we pretty much live on um, rice and fish and variations on that particular theme. 101 ways with fish. Tuna fish, fresh tuna fish can masquerade as just about anything. <laughs> Am I eating lamb or fish or chicken or beef? <laughs> it's an amazing fish to eat and uh, that's what we eat a lot of here. We, we cook the scraps for the cats. If they cook, they last longer in the fridge. They're very bony. Do it right, there's no bones yeah. anywhere, yeah. anywhere to be seen. Yeah. The last night we had some, almost like smoked. <laughs> when I came here, um, I was terribly homesick for New Zealand. M more so than Mike. Mike. Mike is different from me and has a different feeling for, for New Zealand and the land and so on. I, I miss the hills desperately, and the, the land. and. Well, you know, you miss your friends and you miss your family, but I also miss the place, desperately. And I'd have dreams about Hill. This was an actual dream I had. I went to an outer island in Kiribati, and I found there a New Zealander who was living there, who had a tractor and who had made a hill. <laughs> Scraped all the sand together and made a hill and planted grass on it, and here was this green this hill. Green mound. <laughs> and I, I thought, how wonderful, I found a hill. I woke up because it was a loony, a totally loony dream. One way pioneering has affected Ropin's art has been a change in media from an emphasis on painting to working mostly with woodcut prints. Through her father, Ropin is of New Zealand Māori ancestry. In Māori society, a prominent place is held by the whakairo, the master carvers. This uh, beautiful work that they produced out of wood <laughs> and I just felt at home with it. It was not a problem and uh, I loved that sense of cutting into the wood and creating images. Her art has provided a strategy for learning more about this unique culture by creating a special woodcut series. I felt uh, quite satisfied with those images which the Beginner's Guide to Gilbert Tees, which were all about arriving here and learning the language. And you, you see in those images, you see things which were familiar, which were becoming familiar. The Maniaba and the canoe and the, the Bariya. These were all things around us. I was getting to know and I was putting names to them. And in a sense, I saw myself as among other things, is going back to that medieval tradition of woodcut prints as um, being associated with a process of education. And uh, it seemed like the appropriate way to say what I wanted to say at that particular time. There is a, an element of isolation involved in working here as an artist. But at the same time, you can't talk about this place as being a place in which I am isolated in terms of the, the human equation. <laughs> because this society here is a very gregarious society, unlike New Zealand, where you can be isolated in your little house on your little street, and days can go by where you don't talk to anybody, or you, know, you travel on a bus and nobody's talking. Very soon as far.